Multiverses is going to be playable tomorrow for the public, and I wanted to give you guys a head start by recommending the best beginner characters to use while you learn the game. I played hundreds of matches in the closed alpha, and I played every single character in that build of the game. I was also able to help teach my friend, who hasn't played a game like this since Super Smash Bros. Brawl came out, and by the end of the alpha, he was absolutely claiming lives. For this guide, I'm going to go over the single best beginner character for each class. The five classes in this game are Tanks, Bruisers, Assassins, Mages, and Supports. Tanks are essentially heavy characters from Smash. They live for a long time, have a decent amount of armor, and in this game, they are great front lines for their teammates. This class excels at making space for their teammates, and I personally think this class works especially well with mages and supports. As for the specific tank that I recommend, I don't really see a better choice than Wonder Woman. She's simple, you get her for free from finishing the tutorial, and she feels pretty familiar if you've ever played a sword character in the past. She also has one of the easiest support abilities in the game to make use of, where she can give her teammate a hit of armor, you could legitimately just use this move every time it's off cooldown, and it would be effective for your team. Of course, as you play this character more, you can learn more optimal times to use this move, but just starting out, it's kinda of fine to spam whenever it's up. This is the character that I personally use to get used to the game, and like I said, you get her for free once you finish the tutorial. Bruisers are the Jack of All Trades class, they're faster than tanks, but they're heavier than assassins. These are the characters that feel the most like middleweights or light heavyweights in Smash. If you traditionally go for characters like Mario or Captain Falcon, I would absolutely recommend this class. As for the bruiser I think you should start with, I don't really see a better choice than Shaggy. His combo routes are very basic, but fun, and a lot of his moves will feel familiar to players that haven't played this game before. So much so that there's a legitimate argument in the fighting game community that Shaggy could technically be considered a Shoto. He has an uppercut, a kick that brings him forward, and a projectile. He's also the point of balance for the entire game, so the developers want to keep him in a healthy spot. I was able to have fun with this character immediately once I tried him out, and it's pretty hard to top going Ultra Instinct mid-match. Shaggy is also nice because he's one of the free characters that you start the game with. Assassins are fast, offensive characters that focus on combos and rushdown. I would say this class is reminiscent of Smash characters like Joker, Fox, or Sheik. If you like to run it down and stay in your opponent's face, I think this is your class. As for the specific character, I think everyone who played the closed alpha can agree that Harley is by far the easiest character in this class. Her traps and exploding bear can be somewhat difficult to use super effectively, but the rest of her moves are extremely easy to make use of. Her up special is an incredible kill move that you can combo into from her side attacks, her aerials are very spammable, and she was actually one of my go-to drunk characters because of how simple she was to play. Harley Quinn is also the final free character that we'll be going over in this video, and that's another huge plus for her. Mages are the projectile characters that like to keep their distance. That's not to say they don't have any options when they're up close, but these characters are exceptional at stage control. I would compare mages to characters like Villager, Mega Man, and Snake. As for the specific mage I'd recommend, I don't think you could do better than Bugs Bunny. All of the moves Bugs has are very straightforward, but he also teaches you something extremely important in multiverses, cooldown management. Unlike in other platform fighters like Smash Bros, certain moves in this game will have a cooldown to prevent them from being spammed. Every special move Bugs has, has a cooldown, and even one of his standard attacks has one. This is a skill that'd be highly beneficial to learn, and he's also just downright fun. Nothing quite beats the feeling of launching someone into the Ozone with Bugs' baseball bat. That brings us to supports. Supports are kind of a unique class to multiverses, since this game is built around 2v2s instead of 1v1s. This class can save your allies from being knocked off the side, heal them, reduce their cooldowns, give them a shield, 
or really just offer a bunch of utility for their duo partner. Out of every support available, I actually think Velma is the easiest to make sense of. She seems a little complicated at first, but that's just because of her evidence passive. All you really need to do is pick up evidence, which are the little cards that spawn during the match whenever you see them. Once you pick up five of these, you can call the police on your opponent. It's really not that bad. As for what makes Velma easy, I think all of her moves outside of her evidence passive are extremely straightforward. She has homing projectiles, she has a book that'll reduce her teammates cooldowns, and her normal attacks have very good range. This character ended up being one of my absolute favorites in the closed alpha, and I'd highly recommend playing her. For my final character recommendation, just play who you like the most. This is kind of a cliche cop-out answer, but it's kind of true. You're going to want to put the time into the game and improve if you're playing as the character that means the most to you and gets you the most excited. Even if that character is Arya Stark and kind of complicated, if you like Arya Stark, then play some damn Arya Stark. Batman was the worst character in the last build, and he still ended up being my most played character because I love Batman so much. If there's a singular character that calls to you, play that character. If you genuinely don't have a preference, well then I'd keep my recommendations for characters in mind. With all of that said, this has been Nosy Boy. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to play some open beta with you guys. Subscribe for more of that juicy multiverses content, and I'll smell you guys later. Oh.